So I'm still sick, but I'm also incredibly bored on this rainy day, so I feel the need to record this video. I'm getting over it, so don't worry, I'm fine to do it, but I still sound like, you know, <sighs> I still sound terrible. But what I'm going to do for this video is go over the best books I have read and reviewed of 2018. Obviously not all of these books came out in 2018, some of them came out in like the 80s, but I'm still going to go through and pick out my favorites. Now if I reviewed a book this year that I previously read like before in my life, I did not include it because these are specifically the best books I read in 2018. They are not in any particular order, I did kind of group the ones I liked the most towards the end, but I wouldn't say the last one one is by far the best. Without any further ado, these are my top recommendations for books I read in 2018. At number two, we have The Poppy War. This was an incredibly grim, dark fantasy historical book, a very interesting genre to go into, fictional history, but it was obviously based on real history and all kinds of just interesting twists and turns there. I really loved it. The author has a strong voice. Although I will go ahead and say this will be the bottom of the list for me, I did have some substantial problems with especially the way time was handled, and I get the Mary Sue implications some people talk about, but I still see the work ethic there, so I don't entirely disagree, but I have my issues with it, but overall I'd say The Poppy War is very good and worth a picking up because it's a new author introducing a very cool new world and I have a lot of hope that continuing forward the series will be incredible. Next up we have a sci-fi classic, Canticle for Leibowitz. I really enjoyed this book because you know me, I love classic sci-fi and while those reviews aren't typically very well viewed on my channel, I'm still going to be pushing you guys to at least try some more classic sci-fi and I liked the implications and the broader context of this book and this kind of taking the religion and science war that we see in our society to an extreme and diving deeper into what that kind of outcome would be. This author by no means has the strongest voice of any author, but it was still overall a very well done story and I enjoyed it deeply. If you like post-apocalyptic sci-fi stuff with twisted religions, this should be right up your alley. Next up we have a whole series and that would be the First Law Trilogy. This kind of raised the bar in terms of how I view Grimdark and I would attribute it to allowing me to appreciate A Song of Ice and Fire and the show Game of Thrones a lot more because the First Law Trilogy did such a great job of representing the grim dark fantasy genre. I really began to understand why this genre is necessary, and while it's still not my personal taste, I do have a better appreciation for it now, and I would still maintain that the First Law trilogy is the best execution of grim dark overall and morally gray characters taking the spotlight. And I do understand there's a lot of moral gray fatigue out there. Some people are sick of it. If that's the case, just don't pick up First Law trilogy. But if you're interested to see what the peak of kind of this moral early gray exploration we're going through in fantasy right now really could be. There's no series I really recommend picking up more than the First Law Trilogy. It has some of the best, most realistic, believable characters that you become attached to even though they do horrendous things, period. I cannot think of more evil characters I'm more thoroughly invested in than the First Law Trilogy because they're not just mustache twirling evil. They're legitimately interesting. And now for something completely different, we have the absurdist children's book, The Little Prince. And I know this is a total left turn for me to include in this list, but it was so charming, so enjoyable. I loved it. The Little Prince is a great work of absurdism, and I have a huge soft spot in my heart for absurdism. So if you have not read this easy weekend read, Highly recommend it. Apparently I was in the vast majority for not reading The Little Prince. It's fantastic, and the hype is actually worth it. it. It lives up to the hype for once. I would pretty much call it Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for kids. If you haven't read Absurdism yet, you don't want to make the commitment of reading the entire Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, maybe The Little Prince would be a good kind of exercise into the genre to see if it works for you. Next up we have The Witcher series. I've made it clear that I have a deep love for these books. Well, maybe not for the author. I think the books are incredible. It's not quite as morally gray as the First Law trilogy, and while the setting is certainly grimdark, I would still say the Witcher series kind of balances a little bit kind of outside the grimdark genre just because of how good and likable the heroes are. Yes, Geralt is gruff and tough, but he's a very good person and the people you're supposed to care about by no means are bad in any way, so I would just classify them as 
good guys. And to me, that kind of pulls it out of Grimdark. I always kind of see Grimdark as the people you're supposed to follow do some kind of sketchy, dark things every now and then, like Game of Thrones, like First Law Trilogy. So I get that there's kind of a difference there. So personally, I, I wouldn't classify The Witcher as fully Grimdark. I would say it certainly has elements of it, especially in setting and world, but overall it's kind of balanced in between. Geralt is one of my favorite characters of modern fantasy period, and for him alone I would recommend this series, but don't take that as the series as a whole is not magnificent. There is no weak aspect of the Witcher series. The author executes every single step of his entire series masterfully, and I can't give him enough credit, and even though I disagree with some of the stuff the guy does, overall, he is clearly one of the best fantasy writers of all time, at least in my opinion. And the Witcher series, if you like the games, trust me, you'll love the books. Next up, I'm going to combine two different Stephen King books because I think they're both pretty much so different that they are going to be recommended to two entirely different groups, and that is one, Pet Cemetery, which I found to be the best examination of grief and the things you feel and the thoughts you have when you go through loss. Trust me, it's incredibly accurate. Wow, the things, the twisted, messed up places your mind will go when you experience great loss is represented incredibly well to an extreme, obviously, within Pet Cemetery. And Stephen King takes that level of grief. Of course, he then introduces supernatural elements to exploit or take advantage of the human condition, and he does it to the best effect probably I've ever seen. And then turn around, and if you want kind of the more absurd, crazy, zany, coked up level of Stephen King, I can't push you enough towards the stand. It's on the same level as it in terms of how long it is, my god, and the character work and world building that's there. Of course, there is the Stephen King broader universe where all of these books are kind of interconnected. Derry the town is mentioned within Pet Cemetery, and there are, of course, links between the stand and Dark Tower, and there's links between Dark Tower and all these others. There's the Stephen King universe that I'm slowly becoming obsessed with. It's amazing. If you're willing to make the commitment, you probably should jump into this crazy crazy universe because it's awesome. And I would say the stand in terms of scope of the overall huge picture that's done and the detracting from so many expectations and where you think the story's going to go, it's Stephen King's most ambitious book I have read yet. And that is saying something. And now for another complete left turn, we have Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime. I actually don't love Trevor Noah's stand-up. I think he's okay, and I think he's done a good job as the host of The Daily Show. I used to think it a little bit higher of him, but it's kind of just wiffle-waffled recently, but there is no denying that his book, Born a Crime, especially for Americans, should be a must-read in my opinion. If you want to be able to see what it was like to grow up as a mixed child in apartheid Africa, go ahead and pick up this book. It is absolutely incredible. Trevor Noah does a fantastic job of walking you through his childhood and the fact that, yes, he was not figuratively, literally born a crime. His birth was illegal, and him going from an illegal child in apartheid South Africa to one of the most successful comedians today, I mean, there's no denying that he's hosting The Daily Show, is an incredible journey. And don't worry, this is not a super political book. If you don't agree with his politics, you can still pick up this book and just have an appreciation for what someone went through in this world. See, there's kind of a line that needs to be drawn there. You can respect someone's experiences without having to get political about it, and he does a very good job of that. He draws that line so that everyone can review his book. And this is going to be one of those situations where I recommend the audiobook over a lot of the other things because I find Trevor Noah's narration and his personally telling you his life story to be absolutely uh, enthralling. So if you're interested in seeing the story of someone who literally started at the bottom and came to the top, I recommend you pick up Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. And the final book I will recommend, the one I might be recommending the strongest, I still need to sit on a little bit more and maybe read the second and third entries, but the fifth season in the Broken Earth trilogy I found to truly be an actual change up to the fantasy genre. Someone who's taking a new approach, a very distinct voice, and is willing to take some serious risks within their storytelling. The author took a very unique approach to certain aspects of her story. She was willing to deceive the reader in interesting ways and take some left and right turns that make this book re-readable. The book recontextualizes itself multiple times, which 
holy crap, that's amazing to do and makes me enjoy your book so much more. And if you're the kind of person who kind of sniffs around for foreshadowing, you might be able to make some real predictions about what's going to happen in this story, but I don't think you'll be able to predict everything. Yes, there is a small portion of the book that jumps into second person for some reason, and at first it really threw me off and I still don't love it, but with the author's obvious love of kind of just trying out new things and trying to make the reader feel like they're thrown off their kind of stable ground of what they expect, I get why she did it, and I think it worked to the effect the author wanted. This is an author who is taking the time to make sure you as the reader aren't just comfortable going through the standard paces of your typical book. She is bringing you a new adventure with a new pace and some new real risks that I just respect the author taking. The fifth season is awesome and I cannot wait to finish the Broken Earth trilogy because it's the kind of story where I just, if the author did that good of a job at the beginning, I have full faith they'll have just a great trilogy through and through. It's the same kind of feeling I had after reading the first book in the first Law trilogy. It's just so good, you know that the rest is going to be great as well. Anyway, guys, those are my top recommendations of 2018. If there's anything I've reviewed super positively that's not here, it's probably because I either read it once before 2018, or it was probably popular enough that I felt like everyone already read it, even though a lot of these were incredibly popular. I think the younger generation hasn't read some of the classics I mentioned, and I'll forever trying to be getting people to read the Witcher series, because so many people who've played the games have not made the jump over into the books, and I really believe they should. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Please hit the Patreon if you want to see this channel grow, see me put out daily videos in the future, and uh, want to help me buy medicine to feel a little better. Have a good one, y'all. Peace!